resolution. When compromising in a conflict, you need to give a little to get a little. And I think this is a big one, you know, whenever we are in school and Mrs. Harris and I, you know, we have our reward system where you guys can get the chips and the soda, you know, or get free time or, you know, when we go on our reward outings. And that's a big thing that we always say to you guys, you know, you need to get your work done. You need to follow the rules, be respectful. And we always say to you, you need to give a little to get a little, you know, so meaning that you're not going to get that reward. You're not going to get that soda or that special trip if you aren't going to do what you are supposed to. Um, and usually compromising ends up with both people taking turns or the if we can't both have our way, neither of us will attitude. Um, and But it usually is going to leave you and the other person happy. And I feel like in our classroom, we have a really good understanding of compromise. And I think that it works really well. And it usually leaves both of I mean, it usually leaves me happy because you guys are doing what you're supposed to. And it leaves you happy because you get that reward. Um, collaboration is the last one. Um, collaboration plays a major role within conflict resolution and requires great courage and much consideration. Collaborating with another person usually involves listening to their side, discussing areas of agreement and goals, and ensuring that everyone understands each other. Collaboration requires thinking creatively to resolve the problem. This style might take longer than all of the other ones because relationships and the issue at hand are both important. Um but it usually results in a win-win outcome. So collaboration is definitely going to take a lot more time. It's going to be a lot more detailed process. And this is definitely a positive style of conflict because, you know, it's kind of like the Scholastic Choice article we read yesterday um, where they are talking about listening to that other person and hearing what that other person is trying to say. So in collaboration, you're each listening to each other. You're discussing positive things, you know, the areas of agreement, so the things that you are agreeing on, and your goals, and making sure that you, you know, understand each other. So I think the collaboration is probably the most effective style of conflict. Um, it's always, or usually going to end up in a win-win outcome. Um, so now I'm going to read three um, scenarios to you, and I will send them to you in a Word document so you can answer a couple questions. But as I'm reading them to you, I want you to think, how might someone handle this situation using the styles that we just talked about above? Um, and what might be the consequences of handling it this way? So the first scenario, your family just moved into a new house. There are three rooms available for you, your brother and sister, but one is larger than the others and has a bigger closet. Your sister has the most clothes and insists that she needs the room. Your brother thinks he should get the room because he is the oldest. You want the extra space for your drum set. It bothers everyone when you practice in the dining room. Your parents told you to work it out amongst yourselves. Scenario two. This month, your work is, your, I'm sorry, your school is engaging students in an anti-drug campaign. You and Eduardo have been chosen to create a large banner to be hung in the school's main hallway. Eduardo wants to draw a series of student portraits, each with their own drug awareness slogan. You don't like drawing and would rather use the banner to explain the school's campaign in large block letters. And the third scenario, your best friend Jeremy has been flirting with the girl you like. It bothers you, but it's not particularly surprising. Jeremy flirts with just about every girl in school. However, as Jeremy's friend, you know that the girl he really likes is Ashlyn. He's had a crush on her for years. You're deciding how to handle the situation. So I want you to go back over those three scenarios, and I want you to think how might you handle the situation using the this conflict styles that we just talked about above um, and what might the consequences of handling it, um, what might be the consequences of handling it this specific way. Um, and then that is all I have for you guys today. Um, I hope you have a great night and I will see you guys tomorrow.